Hey, morning, um, everybody. As Joyce, we've had two strong speakers um, talking about South Africa, and um, I welcome the research that was done. Um, perhaps just um, saying is, is, is this is a, a paper that where my co-authors is uh, Professor Ada Janssen from the University of Stellenbosch and my colleague uh, Winnie uh, Nicobeni is also working at SARS and we were looking at um, you know the tax expenditures um, like the, the previous speaker Nadine has mentioned that we've actually got a very broad system with limited deductions but one of our large deductions that we still have is the incentive to actually provide um, uh, for your retirement um, uh, when, uh, you know, when you retire one day. So, um, so what we know is, is that tax systems are actually there to raise revenue efficiently, but there's also uh, you know, socioeconomic objectives that are, are driven by, by objectives in, in the tax system. And um, tax expenditures are usually used to, um, you know, to achieve such goals. And so it is just like incentive that is actually coming through the tax system and not directly on the, on the budget expenditure. And then in South Africa, we only publish a uh, tax expenditure statement, not a complete tax expenditure budget. And if you calculate the cost of that uh, tax expenditures that we do cost, it's about 4.5% of our GDP. And the personal income tax system is actually uh, the largest amount uh, and, and constitute about 57% of, of this total tax expenditures. And if you look at the two main tax expenditures that we have, I mean, our tax exemptions are very, very little, and it's mainly on, on interest income, and it's also capped. Um, so it's uh, retirement contribution deductions and medical tax credits. And the retirement contributions constitute about 69% uh, of the value of that tax expenditures uh, in 2021. Um, so the focus of this research paper is actually then to look at um, the personal income tax expenditure and um, do, we, do we see if it's that uh, we know that in the initial design of the personal income tax system, we, we always had a, a, you know, a provision for uh, retirement uh, contributions, but it was like a split system that only uh, de allowed deductions like for formal um, uh, uh, registered um, pension funds and not provident funds. And so there was a lot of, um, I think, um, anomalies within the system. And this was then changed so that we actually um, have a much more broader system where uh, if you provide for your um, retirement that, that it will be deductible against your, your income. And then um, we also know that we've had actually uh, um, quite a lot of distributional gains when we were, um, uh, you know, converting our medical expenses to a tax credit uh, in 2012. And we want to know if we do a similar uh, uh, adjustment to our contribution to uh, uh, retirement funds, uh, whether we can actually also then have uh, any possible gains uh, if we are going to uh, convert our deduction uh, in, in the personal income system. Um, then, um, so we analysed the personal income tax system with the focus on the retirement contribution deductions. And we converted then the retirement contributions uh, into a, a tax credit, and for two reasons. We we also looked at well, you know what will be the revenue gains, and what will be the distributional um, equity implications. Um, this is just what the current um, um, uh, deductions uh, are allowed in in the in the system, and you can see is it's uh, the lesser of uh, three hundred and fifty thousand rand per annum. Uh, or 27.5% um, of, your, of, your, of your income, gross income. So it's a really very generous um, incentive uh, to actually, um, you know, um, encourage uh, formal workers who belong to retirement funds to actually provide for their old age. 
We've used the PITMOD micro-simulation model um, that has been also funded by UN WIDER um, to, to do this uh, simulations that we did. And the latest date that we had, administrative data available, was in 2019-20. And um, we also then looked at uh, taxpayers below the minimum threshold and above the minimum uh, maximum threshold because um, you will see if, the, if you do anything on tax deductions, the taxable income changes. So we could pick up that dynamic impact that's happened, but it's a static model, so is there no behavioral changes. And um, uh, on the development of the model is a really uh, a very big data set that we're working on. Uh, we've got about 15 million uh, records um, and with about 2,000 variables in this database. And um, so we, we were really uh, fortunate to be able to actually do the simulations and then to see uh, what is the feedback uh, in, the, in the data. Um, I think there was also very good uh, quality control that was done in the data. Uh, we used three data sets to actually compile this data, and I think that is the difference between the data that Nadine used and what we used. So we used the IRP5 data that's coming from uh, employers, uh, mainly on employee income, and then we used the ITR12, that is the declarations that were done by uh, taxpayers, and we then also used um, the assessed data. Um, to actually then, uh, you know, to, um, to have one complete database as accurate as we can, uh, uh, you know. I think once you work with actual data, you do realize that, you know, there are like a lot of anomalies in the data that you actually have to work with um, to make sure that your data is as accurate as you could get it. Um, so what would the uh, so when when we just calculate this is what is the cost of the tax expenditure? Um, um, it's about 275 billion that is deducted by about seven million taxpayers, and that is about 10.1 percent of the total taxable income declared um, uh, by by South African taxpayers. And it's close to 48% of taxpayers with taxable income that contribute towards um, uh, retirement funds. Um, if we calculated what does the tax expenditure cost, it's about 92 billion or 16.9% of total uh, final tax liability. Um, because of the concentration of, of those that are actually claiming um, pension contributions, uh, the values are actually, the average values are uh, really low. Uh, in, remember I told you that uh, you, can, you can deduct up to 350,000. What we've seen is, is that the average value contributions is about 39,000 per annum. And if we look at the median, it's actually only about 21,000. 21, and, and that is just because of this heavy concentration that we see of, of workers in the low middle and middle income groups uh, contributing to uh, pension contributions. Um, then uh, you can, as we expected, uh, we can see is as though this, that earn above one and a half million per annum, the average contribution was about 175,000 per annum. And we know that if you're in a system where you can deduct the marginal tax rates do matter because then you are taxed at the 45% rate, so the value of that deduction is much more valuable than, say, for instance, if you deduct, uh, if you deduct uh, at the 26 or a 31% or 36% uh, rate um, the, in the simulations that we, that we have done uh, for this exercise. Um, so on the uh, reform scenarios um, that we did is this, um, we firstly um, did abolish the retirement contribution deductions so that we could see actually what happens to uh, the taxable income and the tax liability. And, and so you actually then determine where are the concentration and, and how is the distribution of the retirement contributions in your tax system. And then for the second scenario, we actually did three uh, conversions. So the conversion rate is just saying is, is that we're using the marginal tax rate 
um, that, that you are actually going to benefit from the rate, the credit rate that you're going to benefit if we if we actually now going to do a, a retirement contribution credit system instead of a deduction system. So the first one that we did is, is that if we want no extra revenue, we don't want to mobilise more revenue, uh, the revenue neutral rate will be then 35%. At the 35% uh, conversion rate, um, we will uh, we will not have additional revenue, and then we took the 26 percent um, as a, as a, as a lower marginal tax rate because that is actually where the average deductions are per annum, and we did the second one at the 31 percent, so that will be the third um, uh, income bracket, just to see is, is what happens to the. Uh, um, Guinea coefficient in the system and to the distribution of taxable income and tax liability. So if we um, if we do the scenario one where we actually then eliminate the tax expenditure, like I've said, it's about 275 billion that we uh, that the taxable income actually increases from from 2.7 trillion to about 3 trillion. And then you will also see that the taxable income of taxpayers in the 500,000 to 750,000 uh, income groups are simulated to increase the most, uh, namely by 102, uh, 103 billion or 2.1% points. And the, in, uh, the increase in taxable income is equal to 37% of the total income in, in taxable income. So you can see how concentrated these deductions are and, and where the impact will be most um, if we are actually going to uh, eliminate uh, the, the tax incentive uh, uh, to, you know, for, for retirement contribution, the deduction for uh, retirement uh, contributions. So the, the graph on the left is just showing the distribution of taxpayers and then uh, the change in that distribution to the base case and then it, uh, on the right hand side you'll just see the distribution of the taxable income, the changes to taxable income. Um, and then in the first scenario where we do the revenue neutral scenario where we do the conversion rate um, at um, at 35, uh, oh, this is the tax liability, sorry. So it's still the baseline case with um, the reform scenario one. So what happens with tax liability? And once again, you can see the 500 to 750,000, uh, the most revenue will actually come uh, about 24 uh, billion from, from that income group. Um, the, and the second highest will for those will be above 1.5 million at uh, taxable income, uh, rendering almost the same with 23 billion. And then there's like, uh, you know, minor um, uh, tax relief that are given, um, you know, to, to lower, lower income groups uh, below um, uh, 150,000, so it's it's very minor there, but you can really see where, because this is actually just showing you what will the, imp the impact on tax liability uh, if we don't have deductions, uh, if we don't have the tax incentive. Um, then um, the simulation, um, if we now do the revenue neutral si uh, situation where we actually got the conversion rate at 35%, um, then we see is, is, is that the most increase in average taxable income is simulated to be for taxpayers earning more than uh, 1 million taxable income per annum. And that's also like high income earners if you look at the distribution of income in South Africa. So they are taxed at the marginal rate of 41% and it's increasing by 2.3 percentage points. And then for those above 1.5 million per annum, it's taxed at 45% marginal rate that increases uh, 2.7 uh, percentage points. And then you will see is this once again um, where we actually see um, uh, if we do the 35% conversion rate, um, those that will benefit with a lower tax liability, and it's just because currently their marginal rate are less than less than 35%, so they will benefit with a higher credit deduction relative to what they had when when they were doing a deduction at at the marginal rate. Then similar, if we do a, a 26% now, taxpayers. Um, 
uh, less taxpayers will actually benefit because the conversion rate is 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 smaller at 26 percent so now um, we also uh, our increase in our revenue mobilization is, is that we will actually uh, almost 23 billion or increase of 4.2 percent in our uh, tax uh, taxable income uh, our tax liability and um, you will also now see is, is, is that the number of taxpayers that will benefit will be less uh, because it will only be those taxpayers that have got a marginal rate of, of less than 20 percent to 26 uh, percent and uh, on average we see that uh, the, there's a, uh, the tax liability reduces for taxpayers with taxable income less than 500,000 uh, Per annum. Um, so what we're just saying is, is that um, once again, you know, we simulate uh, that the tax liability increases for those uh, in the higher uh, higher income groups. And what we see with the Gini coefficient for final tax liability increasing by 0.3 percentage points. Um, so the, the system do become uh, more progressive. So similarly, if we do a 31% marginal tax rate, so that will be a little bit more taxpayers in the lower income groups where will be benefiting from this because um, there's more taxpayers with marginal tax rates less, less than 31%. So now we will actually, our yield and income, uh, ta more tax income will only be 9.5 billion. Um, and because more taxpayers are now uh, uh, paying, in the, less, there's a less advantage uh, for, for lower income taxpayers. And um, we also say this, that uh, the total number of individuals with a final tax liability reduces uh, by 180,300 uh, or 2.5%. And then the average tax liability, once again, for taxpayers less than 500,000 per annum is reduced. And the system is also slightly, slightly more, uh, more progressive. Um, so what is the main findings um, that we have if we, um, so the graph on the right hand side is just showing the effective tax rate and, and what happens at the different income groups for the, for the, for the scenario. So this first scenario, um, just having um, when we, we don't have the, that's the bar graph that just shows us is what happens um, with the effective tax rate and a percentage point difference uh, if, if we don't have a deduction anymore and then we've got the three scenarios at, at the different conversion rates. Um, so I think this is where our main findings <coughs> is, is that to incentivize the provision for old, old age, uh, by, allowing, uh, by allowing a tax deduction is costly. I mean, 270, uh, of 92 billion in tax liability, 17% uh, of our total tax liability is quite high. And it's like the, our uh, chairperson mentioning our high unemployment rate, um, our low growth, uh, the prob structural problems that we have in the economy. So we actually have a very generous um, uh, tax incentive uh, for old age, provision of old age, and that's also quite important um, uh, um, aim for government to have because we don't want people when they retire to be uh, dependent on um, on government for for social grants, uh, but. We also have to take into account how how we actually distribute this incentive, and if we if we know what is the pattern of uh, where your most taxpayers are actually providing for for old age and at what rates and and where they are concentrated, it seems that the 350,000 or the 27 and a half percent might be too generous. Uh, in the context of, 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 of the data that we're looking at. And then um, we know that because of the tax deduction system is, is that high income earners with higher marginal tax rate actually benefits more. And then um, I think this is that it was quite surprising to actually uh, calculate the, the revenue neutral rate uh, 35 percent that is actually quite also a high a high conversion rate to use 
and then just switching the to the 26 percent will yield the the most ef effective revenue if we if we're looking at uh, you know uh, raising revenue out of the system uh, with about 23 billion uh, it's quite a sizable amount of revenue um, that we could actually raise uh, and to actually distribute uh, directly through other means or finance government or reduce the debt. Um, and then, yeah, it's like I was saying, is if we do a change in the conversion rate at only 31%, uh, um, then we will yield much more revenue. But I think the impact will, will then also be less um, than what we will have at the, at the 26%, you know, for middle and middle high and higher income owners. Um, so, uh, in our main findings, we say if we want to uh, look at this policy reform option and to mobilise tax revenue, um, then uh, consider a 26% conversion rate, and that will protect the, the low-income earners from an increase in tax liability and uh, reduce the tax liability of low-income earners uh, contributing uh, to pension funds. So, it shouldn't alter... Uh, any behavioural response uh, from those that that are actually currently providing, uh, and 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 you know, and as low and low middle income uh, taxpayers. Um, so the way forward is this: we thought this is a little bit more uh, analysis to refine the impact analysis on low income earners contributing to pension funds, because we do see the movements of taxpayers at the different rate conversion rates across the minimum tax threshold. And then um, we also want to combine it with the SA mod that will simulate uh, what we can do in the, the tax benefit system uh, with, with, uh, if we've got actually uh, increased the social assistance grants um, by this increase in the uh, tax revenue. And then I think lastly, I think we need to consider any changes to what we currently provide uh, the, in, in the uh, deduction system, um, you know, the cap at 350,000 is relatively high, and also the percentage deduction of 27.5%. Uh, and um, that's all from my side. Thank you. <laughs>